Hi, I'm Jamie from Not So Wimpy Teacher, and I'm in the middle of a video series all about how to teach math. So if you haven't caught the other videos in the series, you might want to start there. My first video was all about what math workshop is, the components of a good math workshop. And then I did a video about the mini lesson, the whole group lesson. And I did video about the small group lesson. Today's video is about the scheduling of your math centers and your small groups. It's about how many groups are you gonna meet with each day and how long will you meet with them? How will you keep this all organized, okay? So I hope this will be a nice quick video that'll give you some ideas and if you need to modify these ideas to make them work in your classroom, of course, feel free to do so. All right. I've shown this slide a few times, but just as a reminder, these are the components of a good math workshop. You're gonna start with your mini lesson, which is done whole group. This is where you're introducing a new skill or new vocabulary. We're using our curriculum if we have any because we're not gonna recreate the wheel. It's not necessary. We're adding in the engagement and the differentiation through our small groups and our centers. Our small group center time is the biggest chunk of our math workshop time. And then we have a small share at the end. All right. You need at least 60 minutes to do a good math workshop. If you have 60 minutes, you can do a 20 minute mini lesson, 40 minutes for small groups and centers. And then maybe you can squeeze a five minute share in some days and some days maybe you can't, it's okay. But it's important that your small group time is the big chunk. I love to have a 90 minute block and if you're lucky enough to have that, then you can do a 30 minute whole group lesson with 60 minutes on small groups and centers and then maybe you can squeeze a share in there. I take that small group and center time and I split it into two rotations each day. This was what changed my math centers and made them so successful. Prior to doing this, I started with six groups and I met with each of them for 10 minutes a day. It was chaotic. It was not helpful to my students. Once you mixed in all of the different transitions, I was really only meeting with students for like seven or eight minutes. That wasn't long enough to use manipulatives and to dig deep into a problem like we discussed in our small group video. So that didn't work. It was a good try, but it didn't work. So I went to four groups and I attempted to meet with each of them for 15 minutes a day. Of course, with transitions, this ended up being more like 12, maybe 13 and when they got really good with it, but taking materials in and out, getting what you needed, I was really still only getting about 12 minutes with them. It still felt too short we really were struggling to use our manipulatives, to do an interactive notebook activity, just to get through much. And so I decided to try a different model. I, I kept the four groups. I have a bigger class. We talked about having three or four groups in yesterday's video. So I kept the four groups, but I only met with two of them each day. This gave me 30 minutes added some transitions and I was maybe 27 to 28 minutes a day. It was a lot less transition time since we only had to transition a couple of times. This gave me so much more time to get out those manipulatives, to get out the whiteboards, to have students solve with the manipulatives, draw a picture, then solve with numbers, and then even write their answer in complete sentences and explain why and how they know and how they can check. We were digging in much deeper and I suddenly felt like I was helping my students and they were gonna grow. Since I'm only doing two rotations and I have four groups, this does mean that I don't meet with every group every day. And this really scares some people. They say, but I have to teach a lesson every day. My pacing guide says so. I did teach a new lesson every day. I always had a mini lesson and I um, moved ahead in our pacing guide with a, a new lesson every day. When I met with my groups, I was able to cover problems from both lessons because we had significantly more time. So I would just start off by giving them a problem from the day before. A lot of my groups were fine with that problem. They've now had two days. They had the mini lesson on it and then they did a review that day during the mini lesson. They, they were already starting to get it. My lower learners, maybe not. And so that's where we spent some more time and we didn't move forward until they were ready. 
and your lower learners might not be ready to move forward and that's okay because that's the beauty of small group is being able to move at their pace without feeling guilty about holding back the whole class. So this really worked for me and that's why I wanted to share some schedules for, with you in case you want to try out this strategy. All right, so if you have four groups like I did, this is ideal for larger classes. I would say for 24 and above, you probably want to go ahead with four groups. Um, and this is kind of what my schedule would look like with the centers that I did. I'll be discussing my center activities in my next video. So I'm going to kind of breeze through that, but you can get an idea of how it worked. Group one had the exact same centers every Monday and Wednesday, and then every Tuesday and Thursday. It was easy for students to remember. So on Monday, group one would meet with me first, then have technology. They'd do the exact same thing on Wednesday. Meet with me, then go to technology. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, they'd start with their independent center and then their math fact center. Very easy for them to remember. Only two rotations each day, and they're getting to all of the rotations, and they're actually spending just as much time, even more time in their centers than if you did every rotation each day because there's less transitions. So they're wasting less time. Group two does pretty much the opposite of group one. They have the exact same centers on Monday, they just do them in reverse order. First they go to technology, then they come meet with me in small group. On Tuesdays they would first go to math facts and then have independent. Groups three and four, they kind of, they flip flop of what group one and two does on Mondays, they actually do that on Tuesday. So group three has independent starting off Monday morning, then math facts. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, they start with me and then technology. So you can kind of get the gist. And if you want, you can go ahead and screenshot this in case it's a schedule you might want to consider. In yesterday's video, I told you about how I kept track of who was in what group and what their centers were each day. So these posters were a freebie in my last video. So if you didn't catch that, make sure you go back to the math small group video and grab these editable posters to help you keep your groups organized, okay? This schedule was amazing for me and I kept it for multiple years because once I figured out how how much more we could accomplish with less transitions, I never wanted to go back to meeting with every group every day. Meeting with every group every day meant that every kid got a little less of me. By doing it every other day, it meant that they got more interaction and feedback from me. And that made all the difference for my students. Some people say, there's no way my kids are going to be able to do centers for 20 or 30 minutes on their own. You'd be surprised with the right training and modeling what most students can accomplish. If your students can't do it right away at the beginning of the year, it's something that you can work on increasing their endurance. And we'll talk about that in my video, a couple more videos away, okay? All right, so some of you, I get this question a lot. Either you have a smaller class, so you don't necessarily need the four groups, or you're required by your administration to meet with your lower learners every day. So I have this schedule, and if I could have done this schedule, I would have. My class was just a little too big for this to work out too well. But if you have a smaller class, this would be so ideal. It looks a lot like the four group, but if you'll notice, so group one and two, they meet with the teacher and have technology on Mondays and Wednesdays, and then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, they have independent math facts. Okay, okay. Look at group three. They meet with the teacher on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then they have technology. So if you look at Tuesday and Thursday in your schedule, you're gonna have to meet with group three during the first rotation. During the second rotation, you do not have a group coming to meet with you. Every one of your groups is going to one of their centers, either math, facts, independent, or technology. This means that you can do a couple of different things. You could pull your low group, maybe they're the ones doing independent, maybe your low group's group two, and they're the ones doing independent right now, and you can pull them and help them through the independent centers. That's one option. You could also pull just a few students who you notice when you're meeting throughout the week, they are even farther behind than some of your other groups. You could just pull those couple of students to do a reteach. Maybe you have a, a child who's been absent a lot or um, just needs extra intervention. Maybe you have two or three kiddos who just need a little bit extra. You could pull those kiddos during your Tuesday and Thursday second rotation. You can pull somebody who 
from any one of your groups really who just didn't understand a skill or has fallen behind in some way. You could even pull some of your high kiddos some days and push them a little farther with your extra time. So it's just really neat. If you have no group that you really have to pull one day, you can walk around and assist, observe, assess. But it's neat to have that little extra rotation where you can do what your students need you to do at that time. It works fantastic for those teachers who say they need to work with their intervention kiddos every day. You could pull them for a second rotation on Tuesday and Thursday. I'd put them in group two if it were me. So this is another option. If I would do, I would consider this maybe if I had like 21 kids. Um, if I, you know, I was a little bit of a smaller class, but you might want to screenshot this as another option for how you can organize your your groups without meeting with every group every day because that was a little chaotic for me. So if you find that to be a little chaotic for you too, then maybe one of these schedules will help you to be more successful with your math centers and your math workshop. So tomorrow my next video will be uploaded and it's going to be all about these math center activities. I'm going to tell you, I already told you what I do at Meet the Teacher, but I'm going to tell you a little about what I do at Technology Independent and MathX for my students. I am going to show you how my centers do not require weekly prep or teaching my students a whole bunch of new activities every week because I didn't have time for that in my math center schedule. So I hope that you'll tune in for the next video. See you then. Bye.